All right, here is some extra guided practice on what it is that we have been doing, whether it's not just balancing the reactions, but also classifying them. And notice with these, uh, if you're told what type of reaction is, you would have to be able to complete that. And that's what we're referring to in these two reactions. Okay? And you're not always given the information. You sometimes have to write out the compound then as well. So, symbol for calcium is what? Okay. And then the symbol for chlorine. Okay. And then we've got what's calcium chloride? Okay. Is that, you're shaking your head no. That would be correct if you're shaking your head no. We've got to do a little bit of changing here, or we don't have to erase anything. Okay. By here? By here. No, sorry, the chlorine. Okay. And what do you mean by two? You're right. Okay. Need two of those. Okay. And the charges would not change. What's start with the negative ions? What's the charge of chlorine? Okay, this is an alkaline earth metal, so it's in column two. So calcium has a what charge? Negative one or a positive two. Okay, so since these charges do not add up to zero, okay, we've got Ca plus Cl two gives CaCl what? Because, yes, the least common multiple is 2. 2 divided by 1 gives you 2. All right? Sometimes this happens as well. Do we need any coefficients? You're shaking your head no. That would be correct. Why? It's already balanced. We've got one calcium on each side, and we've got two chlorines on each side. A chlorine on the left and a chloride ion on the right. What type of reaction would we believe this is? Okay, when we're taking two substances and making a more complex one, that is SY or synthesis. Right. Okay. Are we good with synthesis reactions? Again, you're taking two substances and making something more complex. Okay, and we can also, what is that now? We switch the arrow. Now, this is being broken apart into what makes it up. It's just the opposite of synthesis, which is, you said it, decomposition. That's right. But we'll leave it as is, leaving it as a synthesis reaction. Okay. We're telling you that this, what we see here, COSO4, if we had to name that, what would that be? What is CO? Okay, so this is cobalt. What is SO4? Sulfate. Okay, what's the charge of the sulfate ion? Okay. And how many cobalt atoms do we have? We will only have one, okay? And we don't write it like this. You could. So what that is telling us, what does the charge of that cobalt have? It has to have a positive charge, but positive what? Okay? Because it has to add up to zero, okay? Because cobalt can have more than just one type of charge. It can be plus two or plus what? Three. Okay. So if we did this, well then that doesn't add up to zero. We'd have to do some changes, correct? What's the least common multiple between two and three? Six. Yeah. So then you would need CO2, SO4, three. Okay. But that's not the case. This is 
a plus two charge. So you'd write that as cobalt two sulfate. That Roman numeral tells you what the charge is. Okay. So then what is NO3? What's that I am? Okay. And nitrate has a charge of negative what? Okay. So one nitrate ion has a charge of negative three. And how many of them do you have? So that means everything on this side, all of these nitrates has a charge of negative what? If we have three of them, and for every nitrate has a charge of negative one, that means it's negative what? Negative three. So then this aluminum can only have one type of charge, positive three. Okay? This adds up to zero because three times one, again, that's where that one comes from. That's positive three, and three times negative one gives you negative three. All right. So if we have to complete this reaction, which positive charge would you want to start with? Because the positive charges are always wrote first. Which metal would you want to start with first? It doesn't matter, but which one do you want first? Okay, so cobalt has this positive two charge. What is it going to bond with from here on the reactant side, but on this side now? And to help yourself out, what do these compounds do? Where do they split apart? Between the positive and, and the negative charges. So if this helps you, go ahead and do that. So what does this cobalt bond with from this compound but on this side? The nitrate. Now, of all of these subscripts, are any of them going over there for sure? This does and this does. Why is that? It's part of the formula. Yeah. So since these are tied to the formula, they have to go over here, which is true. So you'd write NO3. Does that add up to zero? Remember, the charges don't change, okay? Because what does nitrate have, or have for a charge? What does cobalt have? Okay, so since that doesn't add up to zero, least common multiple is two. two. And if we take two divided by one, that gives us what? Okay, so this is one nitrate ion, but we want how many nitrate ions? And how do we write that then? Okay, put that in parentheses and put a two on the outside. Okay, that now adds up to zero. So then we have left over aluminum. And what will that bond to from this compound? but on that side, to the sulfate, okay? So how would we write aluminum sulfate now? The charges don't change, and the least common multiple between uh, uh, two and three is six, okay? So how many aluminums do we need, okay? And how many sulfates do we need? And we don't want to write it like that, okay? So just like we've done before, that needs to go in parentheses. Okay. So the last thing we need to do is balance that, okay? So do you want to write all these out, or do you just want to do that in your head with trial and error? Okay. And with trial and error, okay, we've got one aluminum here, and how many aluminums are over here? Okay, so let's just give this a try. What should we try here? Okay, and once we do that,
distribute that through the entire compound. The aluminums are now balanced. But how many nitrates do we have? Six. Two times three gives us six. Okay. So now, how many nitrates do we have over here? Okay. So how do we get six nitrates over here? Okay. I'm going to try a three. Okay. So three times two for our nitrates is six. Two times three is six. Two times one for aluminum is two. Two times one for aluminum is And then let's look at our sulfates. How many sulfates are over here? Okay. How many sulfates are on this side? So how do we get three sulfates over here? If we put a three here, three times one for your sulfate is three. And three times one for a sulfate is three. Okay. How many cobalts do we have? Three times one gives you three. And three times one gives you... So is that balanced now? Yes, it is. Okay. Which is the most difficult for you, do you think? Is it finishing a reaction? Is it classifying it? Or is it balancing it? Or are we getting better at that, do you think? Which is it? Maybe all of the above? I, I don't know. Okay. But then one of the things keep in mind that as we proceed forward, if you have questions, what can you do? It's your responsibility. You can certainly come in and talk to myself or find an upperclassman, and I'm sure that they would be willing to help you with this. All right. What type of reaction does this look like to you in the blue? Okay. Why are you right? It has the hydrocarbons on the left. Okay. On the right, it's, it's a hydrocarbon. Hydrogen and carbon. Okay. And when we talk about a combustion reaction, what are your byproducts in a combustion reaction? Water and carbon dioxide, what we see here. Okay. Is there anything significant about this hydrocarbon? So since this is odd, do we need to do anything to it? I see yes and I hear no. So which, it, which is it? Okay. Should we try it? You double if it's even. Okay? Because, well, and we can just do that by trial and error. Okay? We've got five carbons. How many carbons are on this side? So how do we get that up to a five? Okay? Your carbons are balanced. Let's not worry about the oxygens yet. Let's go ahead and look at our hydrogens. How many hydrogens are here? And how many hydrogens are over here? So how do we get that up to a 12? Okay. Which of those three elements is not balanced yet? Oxygens. Because you're 5 and 5 for carbons, 12 and 12 for your hydrogens, 5 times 2, and 6 times 1, add those two together, and then we only have two oxygens here, so we need an 8. Okay. I mean, yes, you could double that right away, but then they could also be broken down again. That's why one of the things we say, yes, I will gladly lend you money, but you pay me back twice as much as what you borrowed. That's what happens when you uh, double these when, when, when it's not needed. Okay, up to this point, 
Any questions on a synthesis or decomposition reaction? We're okay? A double replacement reaction. Some of them you have to finish. Okay? Combustion reactions. Two thing, three things that we want to stand out with a combustion reaction. First one, okay? It's a hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon. Second one in a combustion reaction, what are your byproducts? Carbon dioxide and water. and water. And when it comes to these combustion reactions, what's in the details with these hydrocarbons? If it's odd, what do we do? Can we just jump right in or do we double it? If it's odd. Let, let me try again. If this is even, what do we do? Then you double it. But if it's odd, you don't have to double it. Now that's going to change later on. And for those of you who are gone for track and other activities, I, we hope that you get in this habit of, of uh, reviewing this because one of the aspects that's going to change when we get into the organic chemistry, which is coming up next, we're dealing with organic compounds like this is. This is, what is what's called an alkane. When these change to alkenes in this type of reaction, it's a little more complex than that. So we want you to make sure that we're in a good habit of keeping up with content on, on the Science Channel here. So combustion reaction. It's a hydrocarbon carbon dioxide and water, and look to see if that's even or odd. All right. Can we move on to the final one here? Okay. Hydrogen chloride, what is the reaction? Or, excuse me, not the reaction. The formula for hydrogen and chloride together. H. And if it was by itself, if we just had H, what would that mean? It's diatomic, this is diatomic, and this is diatomic. Gases and halogens are diatomic, because this is a gas. But it's not by itself. It's with the chloride ion. So what is chloride? Okay, we're adding some chromium. Why are we putting that three there, that Roman numeral? because that tells you some important information on the, on the other side. That's right. So what is the symbol for chromium? Okay. And do we have anything after that chromium? No. No, we do not. So remember, compounds break apart between the positive and negative charges. What does the chloride ion have for a charge? Just like it, it did up here, negative one. Hydrogen is in the same column as alkali metals, even though this is a gas. So if it's in column one, it has a charge of what? Plus one. Does this add up to zero? Yes, it does, okay? Do we have to do anything with this chromium? No, we don't. But you can help yourself out by doing that, just reminding yourself that it's got a plus three charge. So what is being replaced on this side? In other words, where does this compound split apart? Like up here, where in this type of replacement, where do we say it breaks apart? Between the positive and negative ions. So where does this break apart? Same concept. So on that side, can the chromium bond to the hydrogen? No, it can't. Okay. So what does chromium bond to from here, but on this side? Okay. So C R C L. Do we need to change anything with that C R C L? No, we do not. 
or do we? Okay, so what's the charge of the chloride ion? What's the charge of this chromium? Okay, that's where that 3 is coming from. It's telling you what it is. Does that add up to 0? No, it doesn't. So what's the least common multiple between 1 and 3? Okay, so what's 3 divided by 1? And remember, it's not negative 3. This is a charge, not a value. Okay, so what's left over then? Okay, because if you don't put this 2 there, it's going to be wrong. Chances are it's going to be wrong. So just remember, gases are diatomic. So, if we've got two hydrogens on that side and only one over here, what do we need? Okay, so let's just try it. Our hydrogens are balanced. How many chloride ions do we have now after distributing that? Okay, but if that's the case, how many chlorides are on this side? There's three. So if this is two and that's three, six would be the least common multiple. And in order to do that, how would you get that chlorine up to a six? If we put a six in front of here, now we've got six hydrogens. And how many hydrogens are over here? Okay, so you need to put a three here. Your hydrogens are balanced. Okay, so 2 times 3 for chlorines gives you what? 6 times 1 gives you? So everything is balanced except for the chromium. Have to put a 2 here. Now is that balanced? Yes, it is. So some of these are a little trickier than others, and part of it is just finding the least common multiple, and sometimes that's with trial and error. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add or ask about balancing, writing compounds out, or classifying? Otherwise, your second evaluation is tomorrow, and we'll proceed from there. Last thing we're going to do, okay, we said we would uh, discuss your activity. We had requested that we would do that today, okay, and it's just a, uh, a, a brief uh, uh, demonstration here, but you have two uh, clear liquids. What does it mean if you have a precipitate? What did we talk about in class? We said snow, sleet, hail, rain, all of those are a form of precipitation, which means where does it fall from? The, the clouds in the sky. Okay, so when we talk about a precipitate, well then that just means it's falling out of the solution. So, a, I don't know if you want to call it a dramatic change, that what you would see, it doesn't matter which one you add to the other. This is a type of activity you'll be working on on Thursday and Friday, okay? Because some of you, it would probably be about the same group here, be doing this on Thursday. And then those that are absent on Thursday will do this on Friday, okay? There's different ways you can show whether a chemical reaction has taken place, and that is one of them right there. Okay, it changed color. It went from clear to yellow. So one of the aspects I think what's going to happen eventually is this yellow, what looks like liquid now, has a yellow precipitate in it. And what that means with precipitates is they fall out of the solution. So gravity is going to do its job. It's eventually going to pull that precipitate down to the bottom. It'll just be a liquid up on top. So what you do with this is you calculate how much of this you would actually form. So in other words, what this is, this specific reaction, is this. Okay, and then gives you PBI2 
plus KNO3. So, without going any further, what type of reaction does that look like? It's a double replacement. We had just illustrated a double replacement reaction. So what chemists will do is, if you had 10 grams of each substance, okay, when farmers want to put nutrients back in the soil, it's usually in the form of nitrates, so plants can utilize that. Nitrates are water soluble. So this is the water portion. And then this is the precipitate that you would see. So what happens is you would actually measure how much of this yellow precipitate is in there. And then on pencil and paper, you would calculate if we started with this on pencil and paper, we would calculate how much of that we should produce. And that gives you a percentage or a ratio. So it's just some hands-on applications of this that when we see happening, this chemical reaction taking place. So that is coming up on Thursday and Friday. Okay. Left side, we good? Middle, right side. All right, we'll catch up to you next time.